All right, guys, we got about 20 seconds here to go. Again, gold bouncing around here. We got about eight seconds here to go. News is about to come out. Let's see what we get here for CPI numbers today. And the number is in. We're seeing gold come down briefly for a moment there. Euro flipping in both directions here. Uh, dollar shot up and then came right back. Uh, Euro now rallying. Gold now rallying. S&P now rallying. Oh my goodness, look at this, guys. We must have had something come out. Uh, let us know if you guys have the numbers. We just... Oh my goodness, look at this. The S&P shooting up. Did I stay in my trade? I did. Very nice. Back up above the previous highs, about 1571 on this trade. Not wanting to quit here. That's awesome. So let's see what the numbers are. Uh, it must have must have come out here. There we go. We had 4%. Oh my goodness. 4% year over year. We did actually beat expectations for inflation. This has got to be bullish for stocks. Bullish for stocks. Bullish for gold. Um, bearish for dollar. Big time here. CPI month over month came out 0.1. Core came out as expected, 0.4%. Cooling as, um, or, or sort of stagnating as expected here. You've got 4% year over year compared to the 4.1 and previous 4.9%. This is a solid reading here this morning. And there goes the S&P, there goes the Euro. Gold up, dollar taking a beating here. And does seem like we have actually broken through the lows. What a move here this morning, guys. What a crazy, crazy push here to the downside for the dollar and uh definitely definitely feeling good about my s&p trade here this morning we are 1550 1500 let's see if we can hold that 1500 uh profit on this particular trade um very very nice great for some of my my other uh, options trades and that sort of thing you see up 3200 3300 on the day right now what's up dude what happened to you haven't you heard it's the summer half off discount sale Oh, that's right. I forgot. Right now only, get half off any of our VIP Discord memberships. These memberships include access to our signals where you can get entries and exits from Frank and I and full breakdown and analysis with each trade. You can learn our strategies in detail. You can learn how to get funded with our training material to help traders looking for funding. And you can also join the chat room community. We have several membership opportunities, so click the link and check them out for yourself. And remember, you get half off if you either message us or use the discount code you see on the screen. Screen now congrats on that s p trade thanks man it's 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 running are you still in a gold trade though i am i'm still holding on um nice. yeah floating profit so, but uh I was the run say, you're probably really looking happened. pretty good where, tell us tell us just a little bit of where you're at with that gold trade and and what's your reaction to this number today with such uh you know four percent compared to 4.1 right so i think lower cpi is obviously good for stocks and the gold market so um i'm happy that shows that um there's lower inflation the economy isn't too robust um even with jobs growth with nfp the other week so um seems good to me um i'm just probably going to be holding on to gold i have kind of a large stop in place so i'm really letting this trade run but um you know as far as as far as um the bullish bias goes, I think I'm even more so today. I'm sticking with it. Even the Fed rate hike um, projections decreased again. So we're at like close to 80% think that we're going to pause. Last week it was in the low 70s. So feeling good about gold and, and risk on pairs in general. So yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, in terms of gold after today, uh, What's actually interesting to me, Frank, is that, okay, we had cooler than expected inflation, and yet gold is still struggling to get back above these previous highs. Um, I mean, to me, this is bullish. I think underneath this area, and I could be wrong about this, of course, but I think under 1970 is still a bargain uh, after that number. I mean, what we just saw, to your point, is cooler than expected inflation in terms of the Fed's projections shows us that, like, hey, you know, with these numbers... 
the Fed's probably going to be happy to just pause. And again, this is this is not um, you know not even speculation. As you mentioned, Fed projections just changed to even more likely that we see a pause. And yet, gold is still underneath 1970. I I personally think, and again, this is just an opinion. I could be wrong. I think that underneath here is a bargain, and any breakout is uh, is a is a pullback buying opportunity. Again, in my opinion, um, but with this number, this confirms to me that that upside is more attractive than downside when it comes to gold, uh, and, and quite the opposite for the dollar, right? I mean, the dollar um, it breaking through the lows here today, and and if this candle holds, which I think it will, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, I just think that this this is a catalyst that actually could continue to push us lower in this dollar weakness. I, do, I don't see like a sudden burst in in dollar strength. Of course, markets are crazy and that certainly could still happen. Uh, but I like the catalyst of the downside and price action looks really good. Uh, what's your take? Do you have a, a chart pulled up on the dollar? What's your take on the dollar right now? Dollar? Not really. Um, I've been bearish for a good bit, so I'm, I'm not really, uh, I'm not looking at it to trade really. Um, I, I think I drew this a little while ago on the one day chart. I think, mm -hmm. you know, the way it's been moving is lower lows following up with higher highs. Same thing as the S&P and gold sometimes too. So um, drawing this sort of megaphone pattern where it branches out, and you you have higher and lower levels all at the same time. I think gold is, pro or not gold, dollar is probably going to complete this move and come down, test that, come back up for another test at resistance. Um, nothing really for dollar i think cot is very mixed there's still majority long so um i think we're just gonna get a lot of range bound stuff for this um i'm more so looking at uh you know gold because i'm in that i want to get in the s p um but you know you caught that move way earlier than me so i was um looking at a pullback that never really came but so dollar not really yeah. but I was going to say it's one of those things with with something like the S and P five hundred. Um, you know, there there are plenty of times where, for those of you guys who who are newer to the content here, Frank and I have been trading for a long time, and it always seems like one of us has the trade and the other one doesn't want. It just so happens that this time around, it's me. Sometimes I feel like Frank, you've got the gold entry and I don't have it, or you know, you have the S and P entry. I, and and to be completely honest, the the entry for me was pretty aggressive. You can see on the four hour cha uh, candle, you can barely see the concept, right? Broke out, and in this candle, I just dropped it down to a lower time frame, dropped down to the one hour and the thirty minute chart, picked it up, and have held it since. Um, but to be to be transparent, I had no idea that CPI numbers would come out cooler than expected. I was just mostly trading the directional trend on the S&P 500. We also saw yesterday, and Frank, you made this point about S&P, um, that in terms of smart money, big money really picked up their long positions on the S&P and short positions decreased dramatically. But we talked about this after stream even yesterday, Frank. Um, this has potential to be what we were kind of calling it to be like an unwind trade. Like what we have right now, guys, is that if you look at big money, across the board, they're still very short, but that's flipping. So we're starting to see that ship, the Titanic of, of big money being short on S&P starting to flip. Now we saw a little bit of an early warning sign with the NASDAQ where the NASDAQ, you know, very quickly was bought up by institutional traders. Now we're starting to see that trade kind of unfold on the na the S&P where now you can see if you're confused by this stuff again we're tracking the COT data this is something that we do with our software the uh, the edge finder and the concept that we're doing here is that you know we're looking at the positioning of institutional money it's still very short on the S&P 500 but it's gradually flipping too long we see again a big increase in long positions and a big decrease in their short positions as of the most weekly week uh, the most recent weekly reporting. So it's kind of an interesting concept. Frank, walk us through that. And, and what does that mean for uh, for indices as well as for like gold? That What, what could that unwinding trade mean for, for people who are watching it? So yeah, last week we saw almost a 10% increase in sentiment shift, which doesn't necessarily turn something bullish or bearish, but it it's a 
a process. So we're we're looking at what what we see here on the S and P is sixty seven thousand long shares added futures contracts on the uh, open market from non commercial, and at the same time they're taking away short contracts. So this is the uh, that's kind of like a double bullish move. You have an increase in long and decrease in short. Um, no mixed sentiment there. It's very clear that um, you know institutions are buying up into this week and they're probably betting on a rate pause. Um, and CPI was obviously very uh, beneficial and helped reinforce that sort of theory. Um, but what we're seeing now is I think we're probably around, oh, my light went out. We're at like 22% long i think at the beginning of last week so now we're looking at 30 so like an eight percent increase is a huge jump in the in the you know overall sentiment of of things when it comes to uh, the s p so um right. yeah if you pull up the chart at the bottom if you scroll all the way down there's um it'll show you the net long and short positions which hmm. uh looks to be not working so we're gonna have to fix that but um you'll in ideal lens, you'll see these yellow bars coming out from uh, the chart and they'll show you up or down. And the higher it is up, the more bullish it is, has net more long, more net long positions. Um, and then if it's below that horizon, more net short positions. But um, yeah. yeah, we'll have to um, we'll have to take a look. I think that that data is coming in a little incomplete, but it happens. This is, you know, everyday stuff with with software dev stuff we have to constantly be fixing but the point is to your to your concept of you know we're seeing a shift bullish it'll be interesting to see if that persists and it does seem like it was an anticipation for this week where now of course s p can't be can't be stopped it seems uh and especially now that we have cooler inflation numbers well this morning i'll be looking at swiss franc weakness okay so let me give you an example there's a few trades i'm looking at guys so Euro Swiss franc, Aussie dollar Swiss franc, and New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. Obviously, all highly correlated and just trying to trade the one that give me the best setup. But yeah, I, I like this trade. So Euro, Euro Swiss franc, yeah, we was in a downtrend. If we just follow this down, then it found itself into a bit of a range. It's always a massive red flag. If, if you're in a downtrend, and you know it's not making lower lows then chances are structure trend is going to change yeah and it just didn't break these lows okay and then eventually you know you can see this large green candle that we had yeah and it broke these last highs okay if i zoom in a little bit you can see that so as soon as these highs are broken with this candle we're not making lower lows. We now have a higher high. You know, I, I love it on the day chart when it freshly breaks. Yeah, it's literally just broken structure. Because you can get in, you know, it's a, a great risk to reward potentially. And then, and then all I'm looking for guys is an area to trade from. And this, you know, this gray zone in here, again, you know, what was once resistance, when it breaks that resistance and comes back. I know I talk about these setups a lot, but love them, yeah, bread and butter. And then we got the reaction we was after, you know, look at this candle rejecting that area. And, you know, I'm in this trade, yeah, we're just trying to take it up um, to those last, well, I'll show you on the day chart, but yeah, just a great setup. And then on the day chart, we're looking to take price potentially back up to this blue line here, which is this last area of um, resistance. So yeah, and, it, and it's the same for Aussie dollar, Swiss franc, New Zealand, Swiss franc, if we look at this as well. So New Zealand dollar, Swiss franc. Yeah, we've literally just had a structure break here as well. So a similar scenario to Euro, Swiss franc. <clears throat> Apologies if I sound slightly like Barry White today. I've done so much talking. Um, and, and then we've had a break of this level. You know, it was in a downtrend again, not making lower lows. As soon as this candle breaks this level, 
I'm all over it. I'm just looking for buying opportunities. And my target is this um, blue area here, it's five, 600. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. Swiss franc weakness is the same with Aussie dollar Swiss franc as well. Fair enough. Yeah, no, good, good stuff there. And it does seem like the, uh, the Swiss franc pair is having a lot of weakness. I'm sorry, uh, strength. Uh, that is an uh, in, in exception to the, the dollar Swiss franc, of course, with the news that just came out. Dollar pretty much giving, and actually to your point, Tom, uh, this is a four hour chart. We still see, despite all the dollar weakness, the Swiss franc seems to still uh, be holding uh, or, or, or getting uh, beat down compared to the dollar in this latest candle. Uh, Swiss franc, an interesting one here, like you said, against most currency pairs, seems to be taking uh, a little bit of a beating, giving some upside to these pairs. And, you know, it, it kind of makes sense, Tom, uh, from a fundamental perspective. Um, something to note about the, the CH app, the Swiss franc, is that it's notoriously known as a risk off currency, right? People in times of fear, they they put their money in, in Swiss francs. And um, today's number, we talked about this earlier and how important it is when you when you see major economic news coming out from the United States, people are often confused. They'll be like, why is this impacting my trade? makes a lot of sense if you think about global sentiment is getting a lift today due to the fact that inflation, uh, as far as we can see, the Fed seems to be kind of winning the war there on that, right? They're, they're kind of getting the numbers they want. And that's obviously going to release some tension from expectations of further rate hikes. And with it, risk on assets are going to generally get a lift. So it makes exact sense when we talk about dollar Swiss franc, which is also the dollar kind of uh, that that risk off currency as well, um, taking a beating and so is the Swiss franc. So we're seeing risk off uh, losing out today and we're probably seeing some uh, some good lift to a lot of higher risk stuff like uh, the, the indices. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you want our broker recommendation, access to our free Discord, free Edge Finder, or want to chat with us on Telegram. Remember, you can watch us live in the markets every morning starting at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and we have lots more free trading tools and content available on our website, a1trading.com. Thanks for watching.